you know, you you spoke, you used the word luck. 1975, I believe, if I got it right. You you were cast in I was at that time. Yeah, Saturday right. Night yeah. Live. What, what was the? Yeah, you're part of you're part of this iconic show that's been on the air now for over forty years, uh, going yeah, right. on fifty years. Was it just sheer luck that that you were cast? Because you're not even self admittedly. I don't see myself as a comedian. And at that time, I was a writer, I was a composer, I was a singer, and I was a dramatic actor. I was hired as a... I cut you off. I cut you off. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I cut you off. I cut you off. I cut you off. And my duty at first was to come up with something funny, which I took a you know, boy, it took a long time, because I didn't realize as a Playwright, because you can write a play that lasts two hours, doesn't mean you really know how to write a skit that's only a minute long, or 45 minutes long, the third second one. I was having trouble with that. My other duty was to bring in black actors, because Lauren Michaels, God bless him, Lauren Michaels wanted to have a non white, a black member. Of the not ready for prime time plays. So I'm bringing in Bill Duke. I brought in Oba Baba Tunde. I brought in Trey Zana Beverly. You may not know who she is, but she was a brilliant actor who won a Tony for her role in uh, For Colored Girls. Trey Zana Beverly for Colored Girls. She won a Tony. So I'm bringing people like that in. But then one day I came in and Somebody met me at the elevator and said, Garrett, Lord Michaels wants to see you in the green room. I go to the green room and Lauren is looking at Cooley High because John Belushi, Gilda Radner, Lauren Newman, Dan Curtin, they had told him, well, look, you got Garrett bringing in actors. He's an actor too. And, and they said, look at Cooley High. And sure enough, he did. And after he got to looking at it, he said, Garrett, I want you to audition for the Not Ready for Time Drum Play. And I auditioned with Gil Radner. And um, after that, I retired. So I, you know, I came in as a writer, not an actor, and was hired, you know, after my audition. I think that's my uh, phone. I, you know, I have, uh, you hear that sound? Yeah, it's on my phone and I can't find it, but it's telling me my sugar sugar too hot. Okay, uh, Dre, you see my phone? Uh, yeah, I got it. Now give it to me, please. Um, anyway, that's how I became a member of the Time Drop, please. You know, again, I, I, I started off the question by saying luck, because it's it, it damn sure feels like you can have the talent. Um, you can have the access, but there's a bit of luck that we all need, you know, luck, blessings, however, a, a, a gift from God, whatever it might be. It's that thing you can't account for that X factor, because for you to be sitting in that building and they looking at you to bring in the black talent. And he goes and watches a dramatic piece on you. It's not like you was telling jokes in Cooley High. For him to bring you in and say, look, I want you to audition. This is a sketch comedy show. It ain't a dramatic right. piece. And for you to get it, there, there, there's a whole lot of luck involved. That is, let me tell you why. Because uh, one of the things that impressed me about the other members of the Not Ready for Time Time Players, John Belushi and Gilda Radner, who were well, graduate of Second City, where they teach you technique that gives you the ability to do almost immediately comedy about anything improvisationally. So I consider their range improvisationally on a comedic level to be like from one to a hundred. You know what I mean? 
I also trained in a improvisational workshop. Well, where in Second City is in the white was a white workshop. I trained in a black workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, conducted by Michael Schultz, Gilbert, um, um, Gilbert Moses, Dick Gregory. And in the black workshop, you were dealing with things like teenage pregnancy, the white man and all the stuff they'd done against black people, police brutality, right? So instead of going to range from uh, one to a hundred, my range was from hate whitey to kill whitey. That was about as much the range I had. So when I was trying to improvise with them, I was always coming up short, and I realized it. But another thing is I was so impressed with how they did it. I was quite often we were doing improvisational stuff. I'd be watching them, saying, "Wow, look what she just did! Wow, look what she just did!" And suddenly I realized, "Oh, you got to be in it," you know. So for me, the fact that I got that job after improvising with Gilda was, yeah, yeah, a whole lot of luck. Because my improvisational my improvisation you know, skills were not up to theirs at all. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move, and I'll catch you all on the next video.